everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill, and as you can tell, I am not in the vegetable garden today. That's because a lot of you expressed an interest in seeing our pollinator garden. And even though a lot of the blooms are just getting underway or still to come, I thought it would be fun to explain how we put it together, how long it's been here, and so on. And as long as I'm not too long-winded, I will also show you our perennial garden. Now, first of all, my husband Bill and I live in Spokane, Washington, which is about 300 miles east of Seattle. We are in hardiness zone 5B, and we live on five acres in a lovely rural area. Creating a pollinator garden is something that Bill and I had wanted to do for a long time, and so we finally took the plunge in 2019. If you go to my YouTube channel, which is Susan's in the Garden, you will find videos of the initial project and then follow-ups on it. So all you need to do is once you get to my channel, do a search of my channel on the words pollinator garden. One of the things that we were excited about was eliminating a big chunk of our front lawn because lawns are essentially pollinator deserts. There's not a whole lot of anything for them to get pollen or nectar from in a standard lawn. Now in our lawn, we don't have the pristine type of lawn because we have added in things like white Dutch clover, a juga or bugleweed. There are some other things growing in here that I don't even know what they are, but they are providing food for the pollinators. If you go to my website, susansinthegarden.com, you will find a chart that lists the different types of plants that we have put in here. And all you have to do once you get to my website is do a search on the words pollinator garden and that's where you'll find the chart. I primarily planted native plants and there are a few other things in here that aren't natives but they're fabulous pollinator plants. In addition to purchasing native plants from some of the local nurseries here in Spokane, I also got a huge packet of seeds from American Meadows. Their website is AmericanMeadows.com. I don't have an affiliation with them, but the cool thing is that no matter where you live, they've got seeds that will help you attract bees and butterflies, create a wildflower garden, and so on. And it's all based on where you live, so you know you're getting the right kinds of seeds for the plants that will grow well in your area. Now just to clarify that I do practice what I preach, that big grassy area that you're looking at just past the edge of the pollinator garden is planted with sheep fescue. That is a drought tolerant grass. It does die back later in the season. We do not water it at all. It only gets what mother nature provides. We're on a well and we are very mindful about the amount of water that we use. Let's take a look at some of the plants that are growing in here and blooming even. And the first thing, you've probably noticed all of these purple spikes. Well, those are a blue lupin and they are so gorgeous every year. And one of the things that I wanted to point out is that even though I try to have a hands-off approach to this pollinator garden and let it do what it's going to do naturally, if I did not prune off the spent flower spikes from the lupins, I would end up with a gazillion lupins. And so that is what I do as soon as they're finished blooming before those pods of seeds have a chance to develop, I snip them off. And, you know, I think it's a good idea because I do want a lot of diversity in here and not just Susan's lupin garden. <laughs> just in case you notice this yellow flower spike, that is not a lupin. That's actually Baptisia or false indigo. And this is a cultivar called lemon meringue. But there is a native form of Baptisia that I do have also in this pollinator garden. These are California poppies, which certainly add a nice punch of color to the garden. These yellow flowers are a type of yarrow called coronation gold, and they just bloom their little hearts out. This is a sweet William flower head, and the cool thing about the seed packet that I got from American Meadows 
is apparently there were seats for Sweet Williams in there. And they are in all different colors and color patterns. So this place is going to be really bright and colorful shortly. This might not look like much yet, but this is showy milkweed, one of three native milkweeds that I planted in the hopes of drawing in monarch butterflies, which sadly we do not see very often, even though we have traditionally been in the northern end of their range. So I'm always hopeful, and the tiger swallowtail butterflies love it. So that one is showy milkweed. I've also got swamp milkweed and whorled milkweed. Those beautiful blue flowers belong to blue flax, which is extremely popular with the pollinators. These orange and yellow flowers are a native columbine, Aquilegia canadensis. These perky golden daisies are known as Oregon sunshine, Areophyllum lanatum. These red flower spikes are a little hard to see, but this is Cardinal Penstemon, very popular with hummingbirds and pollinators. Now let's take a quick look at the perennial garden, although I probably shouldn't call it that because there are annuals in here, there's bulbs, there's all kinds of things. But generally speaking, herbaceous plants, ones that will die back down to the ground at the end of the season and come up again in the spring. A lot of plants are just getting started but there are some that are in bloom now, and they're just a joy. I have all sorts of bee balm or Monarda didyma in here, and those are really popular for the bees, butterflies, hummingbirds, you name it. They are a great addition, a very tough plant, and so I've got clumps of them throughout the garden, and obviously they're not blooming yet, but they will be soon. I believe these are a dwarf Siberian iris. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's right. Aren't they beautiful? How about some self-sown forget-me-nots? Unfortunately, this iris is just about on its way out, but this is iris pallida. You'll notice the cool variegated foliage and the scent of these purple flowers is heavenly. This is an example of one of the bulbs I have growing in this bed. This is an ornamental allium called Allium nigra, and I think it is really cool. Now look at all the plants down here. I sprinkled a whole bunch of poppy seeds in different colors over this bed near the end of the winter, and they have come to life. <laughs> I think this is going to be so amazing to see all of these poppy flowers. So I'll keep you posted on that because I think it's going to look really cool. This is another type of a bulb that I'm growing throughout the bed and it's almost finished blooming. So this is Camas lily or Camassia and this is Alba. It even has white on the edges of the leaves, which is cool. Columbines, anybody? I've got all sorts of different colors and color combinations, and I just love seeing them bloom in the springtime and early summer. And more columbines. Here are some painted daisies, and you can see the pollinators are quite happy with them. And of course, Ned is supervising the goings on here. He's a little black capped chickadee. I also have bearded iris, which I need to catch up on the deadheading of. And last but not least, I've got two different herbaceous peonies to show you. This one is Sarah Bernhardt, such a beautiful shade of pink and a lovely light fragrance. They just started blooming yesterday. And the other one is this Festiva Maxima peony. You can see there are some red splashes on some of the petals. This one was given to us by some lovely neighbors that we had and who sadly have moved away, but we think of them every time we see this. Okay, that concludes the tours of the pollinator garden and the so-called perennial garden. I hope you enjoyed both. Thanks so much for watching today, everybody. Happy flower gardening.